A long time ago, I worked at this huge medical device manufacturing company. I worked in the research and development laboratory. He was both the sales rep and the service tech for all the equipment that we used. And because we were such a big client, he would buy us lunch every Friday. He was the same age as us, recently graduated from college, so it was a pretty interesting free Friday lunch. But one week, he said he wasn't coming the next week. He said he was going on a second honeymoon, first anniversary, with his wife. We said, oh, cool, how'd you meet? And he said, it's kind of a long story. And we said, well, tell us this long story. He said, okay, fine. When I was in college, I was a science geek. I didn't have a lot of social skills, and I was desperate to get a girlfriend. I wasn't an introvert or anything like that. It wasn't for lack of trying. Kind of like Mick Jagger said, I tried, I tried, I tried, and I tried, but I just can't get no girl reaction. Once I was at this party, and there was this guy there doing magic tricks. But while he was doing these magic tricks, this guy was telling stories. And it was like the magic tricks were there to support the stories, rather than the stories were there to support the magic tricks. He was doing these simple card tricks, but the stories he was telling, whenever he would come to a plot point, the plot point would seem to support the magic trick. It was like story, 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 plot point, magic, boom! Story, 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 magic, plot point, boom! And he was surrounded by this huge group of college kids, about half of them women. And they were all looking at this guy as if this guy was the most charismatic person they'd ever seen. So I thought to myself, if I could just get one girl to look at me the way they were looking at that guy, all my problems would be solved. So I waited until he was done and I asked him. I said, dude, how did you learn how to do that? He said, well, if you want to get good at doing magic tricks, you need to practice doing magic tricks. If you want to get good at telling stories, you have to practice telling stories. He gave me the names of a couple of books. I bought the books about magic and storytelling and storytelling magic. In the back of the book, he said that he gave seminars. And if you come to these seminars, you can learn how to do magic tricks. If you come to these seminars, you can learn how to tell stories. So I saved up my money and I went to one of those seminars. Before he started teaching the seminar, he said he wanted to tell us his background, his origin story. So he did. He said, when I was back in high school, I always sat in the back of the room. I never really participated in classroom discussions. I didn't have a lot of ambition. I didn't really have any dreams. I was just kind of hoping to slide by with B's and C's and hopefully after I graduated high school to get a job in a factory somewhere. I just sat in the back of the room and I watched stuff happen. I didn't participate in any events. I only watched them kind of unfold out in front of me. One weekend I was low on my smoking supplies, so I called my dealer. He told me to meet him downtown in this New Age bookstore, so I got there a little early. While I was waiting, I saw this book by Carlos Castaneda, an American writer and spiritualist. He would go out into the desert, take peyote, and commune with and learn from the spirits. So I decided I'd try that. So when he showed up, I told him I wanted to change my order. He said, no big deal. So I went to the desert, took the stuff, and then waited for whatever to happen. During the first hour, I started to see trails. I would turn my head and watch stuff kind of blur behind me. I could look up at the sky, look at the stars, turn my head, and turn the stars into shooting stars. Very slow-moving shooting star. During the second hour, I started to feel voices inside my head. I couldn't figure out what they were saying. They weren't scary. They weren't evil. They were just kind of a low background buzz in the back of my head. During the third hour, I heard the voices much more clearly, and they were coming from outside my head. I had to do some kind of triangulating to, to figure out exactly where they were coming from. And then I realized the cacti were talking to me. Not really talking to me, more like lecturing me. 
They said, you can no longer afford to sit in the back of the room. You can no longer afford to watch life pass you by. You can no longer hope to slide by with a bare minimum of effort. Because of the ideas in your head, you are obligated to share them. Because of your experiences, you are obligated to share them. Because of your opinions and your insights and your unique way of looking at the world, you are obligated to express yourself. Now, right now, as you listen to these words, you might not feel that you are completely worthy enough to do that. But a single neuron inside your head is really not worthy by itself until it becomes part of a greater whole. When it becomes part of the 100 billion neurons inside your brain, it becomes part of the emergent system that creates your self-awareness. Similarly, your brain on its own, isolated and contained inside your head, might not feel like very much. But when you allow your brain to commune with universal brain, you will be part of a much larger emergent system. An emergent system that will give you power and insight. An emergent system that you can tap into and gain insights that are not available to the common person. An emergent system from which you can gain incredible power. You can gain incredibly dynamic and charismatic social skills. Incredible skills of magic and storytelling. Incredible skills of insight, creativity, and leadership now that you have heard these words, there is no going back. You are obligated to share your insights, your ideas, your experiences, and your opinions. You are obligated to share the results of your creative genius. You are obligated to participate in the world so that you can better share and express your unique gifts. Next thing I knew, I woke up in my tent I was covered in those prickly cactus things. He said that for the rest of the seminar, he did learn magic tricks. He did learn some very powerful storytelling techniques. And he was able to combine them in the very powerful and ancient art of storytelling magic. That's when he said he was able to combine the two hemispheres of his mind. The scientific side with the artistic side. The engineering side with the storytelling side the emotional side with the logical side. That's why he became both a service tech and a sales rep. He learned how to not only sell machines to anybody, but how to also fix the machines. It seemed like he was kind of winding down with this story. And my friend said, But dude, what about when you went back to school? When you were able to go to parties and do card tricks and tell stories and mesmerize crowds? When you learn the secret party skills of natural and easy seduction and crowd brainwashing, he said he learned how to do that, but he didn't need to do that because he actually met his future wife at that storytelling magic seminar. And that's where he was going for his second honeymoon first anniversary to a week-long storytelling magic seminar in Hawaii. And that's why we did get a free lunch the following Friday. Thank you for watching. If you want to stay in the loop and keep improving your social skills and your communication skills, please subscribe, like, and comment. To learn more, please visit mindpersuasion.com.